What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me. Now today we've got this paper cutout style of the solar system. Now you need to check out the requirements. It's in the description down below for the canvas size, the palette and anything else that I've used in today's design. Now this tutorial does include a lot of repeating steps, which is mainly the reason for the duration of the tutorial. Now I don't skip ahead in this video at all, so we can go through each steps, repeating each layer and every effect that we need to add into it. So hopefully you don't get bored of my voice by the end, but by the time you finish, you'll end up with this really cool design. So with all that said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do once we've created our canvas is create the initial circle which is going to act as our cutout. Now if we go up to our colours we're going to go ahead and grab the top colour in the far right column and each column here is a different planet leading up to the sun. So this one here in the very top right corner is what we're going to use. We're going to go to our brush library, we're going to go ahead and go to calligraphy and we're going to use the monoline brush. Now the brush size doesn't necessarily matter but the brush size for me I'm going to make it sort of about sort of 15% so I can see it. And we want to draw a circle in the middle, nice and big, and then I'll give you the exact sizes afterwards. So let's draw in a circle in the middle of the screen. Hold your pen at the end and it'll smooth it out. But if you pop your finger on the screen, you'll get a nice perfect circle. You want to make it roughly sort of as big as you can for a minute without going off the edges. Then grab your cursor, tap on your cursor. Use the uniform option. And then first of all, position that in the center of your design. And it's going to be important that you use snapping here just to make sure you hit those orange lines which lets you know you're nicely centered both vertically and horizontally and if we tap on the node in the top right we can see the dimensions but we want to change this to 1670 and then go ahead and position that again in the center of your canvas then tap on your cursor when you're done and we can use this as our cookie cutter shape so we're going to grab our color that we've currently used and drop it into the outside edge and then everything else will be nicely hidden underneath. So we're not going to waste any time, we're going to go ahead and get straight into the first planet and keep making our way all the way down the design until we get to the bottom. So let's go ahead and take a look at our colours. We're going to use this column here. And this is going to be for Neptune. Now the bottom colour is the base colour, the middle colour is a highlight for the airbrush and then the top colour here is going to be used as the script brush for nice little detail. So grab your base colour at the bottom and this is going to repeat the whole way through. We're then going to go to our layers and create a new layer. And then using our monoline brush still, we're just going to draw a circle in the middle of the screen. Pop your finger on the screen to make sure it's a nice perfect circle. And something in terms of scale roughly around about that sort of size is good. Then drag and drop your colour in. Then go up to your layer then tap on the layer and turn on the alpha lock. We're then going to go to our brush library and we're going to use the airbrushing, the soft brush. We're going to go to our colours and grab the second colour in the column for this planet so the middle color and the brush size is set to about 10 percent and we're just going to simply just paint in a highlight in this top edge here in a circular motion that's all we want to do we want to have a real basic look to this so something like that and then we're going to go to our colors we're then going to grab the top color in the column for this planet we're going to go to our brush library we're going to go to calligraphy this time and go down to the bottom and use the script brush now I've got my script brush set to about 25% and all we're going to do for this is just run some lines in round the side of the planet like so. Now this one's going to be quite sort of simple but we're just going to run some lines in a little bit like this and just give them a nice curve so they match the curvature of the planet and something like that is good. Then we're going to go ahead and zoom out and we're going to position this where we need it. So we're going to grab our cursor now and move it over to the top left sort of area. Now at the minute, it is currently situated on top, but we wanna to go to our layers and drag that layer underneath the main cookie cutter shape on the top. And that's nicely in position and we can rearrange them afterwards if we need to, but you wanna push yours somewhat into this corner like so. And we're gonna kind of repeat this process now all the way down the layers. So we're first of all gonna to go to our layers and we're gonna to go to our cookie cutter shape. Now we're gonna swipe that to the left and duplicate it. We're going to go ahead and on the bottom one out of the two, we can see there's an emptiness obviously in the center and we can see it's full on the outside. And just to aid our eye a little bit, we're going to go up to our colors and we're going to grab the middle color. So it's a slightly darker version of this one, the middle color in the far right column, go back to the layer and we know it's outside of the circle. So we just drag and drop the color in here and you won't see any visual change, but this has actually now been made darker. 
And if we drag that layer underneath the planet we just created, grab your cursor. So we're just going to simply scale this down now. You'll be able to see the difference in color. And we're going to scale that down until we get something quite similar to that. Now we want to make the gap at the top nice and small. And then this one is going to be quite crucial that you kind of get it close to that size. So something roughly around about that. And that should give us enough space when we get all the way down to the end of the sun in the center. So tap on your cursor when you're done and you can see there's a little gap there, just a tiny one. And then we've got the big gap towards the bottom. And then we go ahead and draw in our next planet. So we simply go ahead and create a new layer. We can drag it underneath the shape of the cookie cutter for that layer. We can then go to our brushes. Now, rather than keep jumping in between all the different groups, if we scroll right up to the top and we see this new option here in Procreate called Recent, we can see the top three brushes that we've been working with and we can nicely jump between them rather than jumping into each section. So we're gonna use the monoline brush. We're gonna go up to our colors and we're gonna switch out to the next base color. So it's the bottom of the third right column. So this one here, we're gonna go ahead and go on our layer, making sure it's nice and empty. Draw in a circle in the middle of the screen and pop your finger on the screen again. Now we wanna make this one a little bit smaller than this one on the left. Drag and drop the color in. And then the same process, go to the layer, tap on the layer and alpha lock it, and go to your colors, and switch out for the highlight color, so the color above it, the middle color in that column. Go to your brush library, go to the soft brush, and then we're gonna zoom in and just brighten up this top edge, like so, in a circular motion. And go to your colors and grab the next color, which is the top color in the column. And then go to your brush library, Go back to the script brush again and then just draw in some cool horizontal lines again in this so just some nice curve lines around the planet they don't need to match and they don't also need to come from the edge you can just create the nice cool shapes as they make their way around and some of them you can make a bit sort of bouncy and wobbly and a bit random in terms of shape just to sort of change it up a little bit but something like that will do the trick and then we're going to zoom out and we're going to grab our cursor and we're going to position this one down here roughly somewhat like this. We're then going to go ahead and tap on our cursor and then repeat and make our way down another planet. So I'm not going to skip ahead. We're going to do this all together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the cookie cutter that we last used, which is this one here. Turn it on and off just to be sure. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two. We're going to go to our colors and grab the top color in the far right column, which will match this blue here and then drag and drop that into this darker rim here. Again, you won't see any visual change, but we've changed the layer underneath, which is this one here. And then drag that layer underneath the last planet you created. Grab your cursor. And with the uniform option, just scale that down again in size until you leave the same gap at the bottom and at the top, just to make sure things are nice and even. So something roughly like that should do the trick. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And then we draw in our next planet. Now this one is gonna be Saturn, of course. So we're gonna to have to do the rings around this one. So let's create a new layer, just anywhere for the minute. Let's go to our colors. Let's grab the base color at the bottom of the fourth column to the right. So the base color at the bottom here. Go to your brush library. We're still working in the recent section and we're gonna use the monoline brush. And we're gonna draw in the main body of Saturn. Now this is gonna be slightly bigger. Something in scale roughly around about that sort of size will do it. Drag and drop your color in. And then repeat the process as we did before for now. So go to your colors, go to the middle color for Saturn, and then go to your brush library, soft brush, then go back to your layer, tap on that layer and make sure it's alpha locked. And then exactly the same, we're just going in a circular motion, brighten up that top edge, like so. That's looking cool. And then we're going to go to our colors. I'm going to grab the top color for Saturn in that column. Go to our brush library and the script brush. And then again, we can just run some horizontal lines across the planet. Now it's up to you how sort of much pressure you want to put down. And this one, I'm going to go backwards and forwards quite a bit where some might create nice little gaps in between. You don't want to make it too uniformed, but something cool like this. And you can make some like sort of flick up a little bit higher if you need to. You can run some thin lines in here like this. You can also run some big chunky lines if you want to put some nice pressure down, like so. And you can block out some as well when you finish. So you get something close to that. 
Then what we're going to do is it's going to go to our layers and create the rings. So we're going to create a new layer. We're going to continue with the color we've got. So we're going to go straight to our brush library and go to the monoline brush. We're going to draw an ellipse in the middle of the screen, like so. Hold your pen and it will make it a nice perfect ellipse. And then pop your finger on the screen just to scale it as you wish. So something like this, it's got to be bigger than the actual planet itself, of course. And then drag and drop the color in. And then grab your cursor and just move that to the middle of Saturn. You can then maybe scale it up or down if you need to. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And to get the cookie cut out the middle, we're going to go ahead and go to this layer. We're going to swipe it to the left and we're going to duplicate it. We're going to tap on that layer and we're going to invert it just quickly because it's just a little cookie cutter shape. We're going to go to our cursor and with the uniform option still selected, we're just going to scale this down and then position it in the middle of that ellipse like so. Just making sure you leave a gap obviously on either side of what will be the curvature of the planet. So tap on your cursor when you're done. Tap on your layer. We want to select the shape of the blue one and erase it from the yellow one. And it's quite simple to do that. You just tap on the blue layer, go to select. It's pretty crucial that you turn off color fill here. If you use color fill, it won't work. So now we've selected that shape. We can go back to our layers, go down to the layer we want to remove it from, tap on that layer and clear it. You'll see the difference in your little thumbnail there. You can go up to the blue circle and swipe it to the left and delete it. And then you're left with the rings. And then what you might need to do, just like mine, you can see the ring just on the front end here. Just go to your eraser, tap on your eraser and go to calligraphy. And the monoline brush is the best one to use for this ideally. Make it nice and big and just zoom in and just, just go right close to the edge there. And then you'll need to just erase the bit that runs through the planet. So it looks like it nicely wraps in behind like so. And then you've got Saturn. And then we can go up to our layers. We can pinch the two layers together. We then need to drag it underneath the cookie cutter for that layer. Grab your cursor. And then we can go ahead and rotate it, position it down here, and maybe just scale this down a little bit. So mine's probably a little bit too big. We obviously want to make it sure it's kind of proportionate, but not super accurate. So maybe something such as here will do the trick. And we've got a nice little bit of overlapping here with the other planets. So tap on your cursor when you're done. We then move on to the big one, Jupiter. So let's go up to our layers and repeat the process. We're going to go to the last cookie cutter layer we made, turn it on and off just to be sure. It's the smallest cookie cutter shape in the middle. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two. Go to your colors and grab the middle color on that far right column first of all. Drag and drop it into the light blue ring here in the middle. Again, you won't see any visual change, but we've changed the layer underneath. Grab that layer and drop it underneath Saturn. Go to your cursor and then scale that down. And again, leaving the same gap at the top and preferably the same gap towards the bottom. And then if you happen to leave a small little gap around the bottom, like I can see here, there's a little bit of white. That's no problem. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And all you want to do is just drag your color into that white space and it will have basically filled in all the empty space around the outside there. So let's move on to Jupiter. Let's go to our layers. We can go ahead and I think we should start creating our planets at the top now because it's getting a bit crowded so we can see them. So create a new layer right at the top of your layers. Go to your colors. Jupiter is the fifth column from the right. So it's the bottom color we want to grab first of all. We then want to go ahead and with our monoline brush still, we want to draw in a circle in the middle of the screen and then pop your finger on the screen. Now it just needs to be a little bit bigger than Saturn, but we're going to sort of hide most of the body of it out of the way on the right hand side. Drag and drop the color in. We're then going to go ahead and zoom in on this one. We're going to go to our layers now and on that circle, we're going to tap on it and alpha lock it and then paint it in as we did before. So go up to your colors, grab the next color up in the, in the Jupiter column, which is the middle one. Grab your brush. It's the soft brush we're after. And you may want to make it a bit bigger this time just to save yourself some time. About sort of 20% may do it. And then just brighten up that top edge like so. Then go to your colors and switch it out to the top color in the Jupiter column. So the fifth column from the right. And go to your brush library and again, switch it out for the script brush. 
And again, we're going to just run those lines across the planet. So some big pressures here and there. You can make these super thin if you want to and just go backwards and forwards, create some nice big chunky ones. Just run those lines across and you can go top to bottom first of all and then see all the gaps you've left and maybe just drop in some lines that maybe just come in from the edges only like so something cool like that it's just meant to be kind of minimalistic so this is the biggest one out of all of them and you want to end up with something like that and then we're going to go ahead and put it in the right position so go to your layers drag that planet all the way down to the bottom in front of your background color grab your cursor and just position this somewhat like here we want it to be sort of hidden in behind and we're probably going to rearrange some of them towards the end anyway so let's just maybe uniform that up a little bit. Be careful not to crop out anything just yet on the right hand side there. But something just like that should do the trick. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. So it's getting nice and clustered and crowded a little bit. But again, we may arrange some towards the end. Let's then go up to our layers and repeat the cookie cutter shape that we need to do for the next layer down. So it's this one here, the bottom cutout. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two. You can go ahead and grab your colors. Grab the top color in the far right column this time and drag and drop it into that ring. Then grab your cursor and you can scale this down and again position that so the gap is equal at the top and the bottom as well we need to make sure it's nice and equal. So something like that looks like it's going to do it. I'm going to tap on my cursor when I'm done. We're then going to go to our layers and drag that layer to the bottom in front of the background color. We're now going to go right to the top of our layers we're going to create a new layer and we're going to draw in our next planet. So we're going to do Mars now. So let's go to our colors and it's the red column, of course. So it's almost the middle one in the center of the palette. But it's it's now the fifth column from the left hand side. So this one here, bottom color. These colors are very close to each other. So you might not see too much of a change. Go to your brush library and go to the monoline brush. We're then going to go ahead and draw in our next planet. So we're going to draw in a circle in the middle of the screen. Put your finger on the screen and something in terms of scale something maybe like that drag and drop your color in go to your layer tap on that layer and alpha lock it and then repeat the same process we've done before so go to your colors the middle color in that column is our highlight color we're going to go to our brush library and the soft brush we're going to zoom in on that and just reduce our brush size back down so maybe something about eight percent brighten up that top edge Again, you won't see too much of a change. Let's then add in the little textures. So go up to your colors, grab the top color in that column, go to your brush library and the script brush. And let's reduce our brush size down maybe now to something about sort of 10% so we can get some sort of more finer details in here. And again, this time I'm gonna sort of just dash my brush backwards and forwards across, like I was gonna do sort of the line work, but I'm just going backwards and forwards some of them I may make sort of lines, but just bouncing my pen up and down just to create more of a less uniform sort of line work, but more sort of a bouncy, rocky look to it. So something like that is actually pretty good. That's looking pretty sweet to me. Just add a little bit on that top edge. and I'm good to carry on. And again, we're going to position this where we need it. So let's zoom out. Let's grab our layers and grab that layer and move it all the way to the bottom. And we're going to grab our cursor. So we're going to move Mars down here towards this left hand side. Now I can already see now it's getting a bit crowded and I need to make a bit of an adjustment before we carry on. So I'm going to leave Mars there. I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm going to start moving some of these around. So I'm going to grab the first planet we created at the top. So it's the second layer from the top there, this blue one on the left. I'm just going to move that up and into the top left hand side a little bit more, just giving a little bit more space in here. And I'm going to grab my layers again and grab Saturn. And I think I'm going to grab the cursor and maybe just scale it down a little bit and then move it just into here a little bit more and a bit further down. So we eliminate a little bit of it, but for the sacrifice that we can fit some more planets in there. So something a bit more like that. And again, we can make adjustments as we go, but I want you to see my adjustments so it doesn't just appear like I've made a quick change. The next layer we're going to do is of course Earth. So we're going to go up to our layers. We're going to go down to our cookie cutter shape here for that layer. We're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. 
You can if you want to, you don't need to necessarily do the bottom one actually. You can go up to your colors and grab this middle color on the far right column. Drag and drop it into that ring, you'll see it change. If we go up to our layers and drag that underneath Mars now, then grab your cursor. I can zoom out of mine just a little bit and we'll undo that. We'll scale this down in terms of size. Make sure again the gap at the top is the same and the gap at the bottom is also the same. So you're making sure it's nice and consistent from top to bottom. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. So I can see that my gap's roughly the same there as the last one. We're then going to go ahead and do Earth. So let's go up to our layers and we're going to go right to the top so we can visually see it. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to go to our colors. Earth is this one here with the fourth column. So we're going to grab the blue at the bottom. We're going to go to our brush library and the monoline brush. We're going to go ahead and draw on our circle in the middle of the screen. And we're going to make it nice to scale. Roughly around about this sort of size is good. Drag and drop your color in. Now for this layer, we're not going to do a highlight in terms of the nice sort of glow on the top. We're going to jump to the land layer and we're going to do clouds on top of that. Now it might sound a bit daunting, but we're just going to really make it quick and abstract. So we're going to go up to our colors and switch it out for the green in the middle of that column for Earth. We're then going to go to our layers. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer because we need to draw in the shapes for the land and we don't want to just do the color fill on the same layer. So we're going to tap on this layer and clipping mask it to the Earth for a minute. And I'm going to reduce my brush size down to something maybe about sort of 3% and just very roughly just create the land of Earth. So I'm just going to roughly sort of do Europe in a sense, very bad and rough. But we're going to link up to the start point so we can drag and drop our color in and just continue to add in the land as well down here so just creating a nice little bit of land towards the bottom drag and drop color in and do the uk so just creating that at the top here creating a little little island and then we're going to go ahead and do the US. So just creating the US. Again, this is just meant to be kind of abstract, kind of quick and easy, a simplistic look to it. And then a little bit down here as well. And then drag and drop your color in. So you really only want to aim for something like that. Because once we put the shadows on, you're not going to see a great deal of it anyway. But what we're then going to do is, is on our layers, we're going to continue on this layer. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the top color in the palette for this planet and we're going to go up to our brush library and we're going to go to the script brush and with this brush we're just going to create some clouds in exactly the same way you've done all of those lines around the outside so i'm just going to sort of run in some lines and i might make my brush size a bit bigger about 15 percent this time and just bounce my pen up and down as i go in and just block out some more of it if we need to and just create some sort of rounded lines that run around the planet like so Something like this, a little bit over the top. Just something pretty straightforward, nice and easy, like so. Really cool, really simple. Then let's go to our layers. We're done with that layer now, so we can actually pinch it to the planet. And then just as we did before, and then we're gonna drag Earth all the way down to the bottom above the background color layer. Then grab your cursor, and we wanna position this one with left snapping on so we can put Earth nice and central on that orange line. So it's kind of like a, our little center focus. So something a little bit like this. Tap on your cursor when you're done. So we're gonna move on to the last two planets before the sun. So go up to your layers and we've got the cookie cutter shape that sits in front of Earth. And we're gonna swipe that to the left and we're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna go up to our colors and grab the top color on the far right column. Drag and drop it into that ring there. Then grab your layers and drag that underneath Earth. Grab your cursor, you may need to zoom out a little bit, and then we're just going to scale this down in size just as we've done every time. Make sure that gap at the top's nice and equal, and making sure the gap at the bottom is also equal. Now, what you might need to do is, is actually sort of guesstimate it for a minute Tap when you're done on your cursor, and then just go back through your layers and turn off any layers that sit in the way, such as the planets, and that will give you an idea just quickly that your gap is very consistent the whole way through. You can make some adjustments and adjust this layer. I'm gonna go back now and turn on the planets that I turned off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go right to the top of my layers and create a new layer. And we're gonna to go to our colors. 
I'm going to grab this third column here, so it's the bottom colour we're after first of all. We're going to go up to our brush library and switch it back to the monoline brush. And we're going to draw in a circle in the middle of the screen. And these two are going to get a bit smaller, so we can make that a little bit smaller, like so. Drag and drop the colour in. But the rules still apply, so we're going to zoom in on it. We're going to go to our brush library and switch it out to the soft brush. We're going to go to our colours and grab the middle colour in that column. We're then going to go back to our layer. Tap on the layer and alpha lock it. If you reduce your brush size maybe to about 5%, you can then just lightly highlight that top edge. Then go to your colors and grab the top color in that column, the third column, top color. Go to your brush library and use the script brush. And we can draw in the lines that run across the planet. So just run in some lines across. Like so, just going backwards and forwards. You want to make sure your lines are nice and consistent, like so. And then we're nicely there with this one. Introduce some lines from the side. So that's looking pretty good to me. I'm then going to go ahead and go to my layers. I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom and underneath our cookie cutter shape and in front of our background color. Grab our cursor. Zoom out a little bit and we want to position this one just over here on the left hand side. So something around about there will do the trick. Tap on your cursor when you're done. We've got a nice little cluster of planets here. It's looking really nice and sharp. We've only got one more planet to do, so let's go up to our layers. Let's go to our cookie cutter shape for the very bottom one. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The top one, we're just going to go up to our colors now. And grab the middle color on the far right. Drag and drop it into the cookie shape, which then will darken up that ring. Grab your layer and move it all the way to the bottom in front of your background colour and then just as before grab your cursor and then just scale this down in size so again make sure that gap at the top is nice and consistent and the bottom gap is also consistent like so that's looking good tap on your cursor when you're done and then the final planet we're going to go up to our layers and go right to the top and create a new layer and then we're going to go to our colors. And as before, we grab the bottom color in that column, which is the second column. Go to your brush library and go to the monoline brush. And then we're going to go ahead and draw in a circle in the middle of the screen. This will be the smallest out of all of them. Something roughly around about that. Drag and drop your color in. Go up to your layer and tap on the layer and turn on the alpha lock. Go to your colors. Grab the middle color and let's do our highlight glow. The middle color in that second column grab your brush which is the soft brush my brush is about four percent this time it's nice and small brighten up that top edge go to your brush and switch it to the script to brush and then go to your color and switch it for the top color in the palette or for that column and then just run them lines nice and across the planet like so you can keep it kind of minimal on this one if you want to something a bit more like that and then go ahead and grab your cursor and we want to move this one just over to the right hand side ideally position by something like that and tap on your cursor when you're done now of course we need to move this under its layer so go to your layers grab this layer and you're going to want to move it all the way to the bottom in front of your background color here and let go and take a look at its positioning that looks pretty good to me and now we've got a really nice big space in the center to create our sun so we're going to go up to our layers and we're going to do it at the top first of all again so we can visually see it and then move it into position. So let's create a new layer. Let's go to our brush library and go to the monoline brush. We want to go to our colors and the first column is the sun so we're going to grab the red at the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and draw in a circle in the middle of the screen. Pop your finger on the screen and something roughly around about that would do. And then drag and drop your color in. Grab your cursor. And then make sure we hit that orange line running down the middle of the canvas. And I think we can move this up a little bit to say here. Tap on your cursor when you're done. We'll go to the layer and we'll tap on it and alpha lock it. We'll go to our colors and grab the middle color in that column. I'm going to go to our brush library and the soft brush again. And then in the center here, we just want to brighten this up. So in the center, like so, leaving that red around the outside. Now for the sun, we're going to go ahead and go to our layers and create a new layer. We're going to tap on that layer and clipping mask it to the sun. We're then going to go to our colors and grab the bright yellow that's on top of that column. And go to our brush library 
and switch it to the script brush. Now for this one, we want to be nice and random with it. Kind of do the line work we did before, but just literally just like dot it all the way sort of around and create nice big chunks of color. You can put them quite close together and then you just want to sort of dash it around the sun. I was about to say planet, but dash it around the sun, like so, creating a nice sort of random pattern just around here because we want to go ahead in a second, add in a blur, but we just want to make sure this doesn't look too much like the planet. We want it to be nice and random. So something like this is going to slowly give us the look we need in the end. So just dashing this around and try not to make it too uniform. If it starts to look a bit too much like I did there with too many lines, just, just leave the layer and come back to it and just dash around the whole of the sun. Maybe in certain areas here, I could just add some more. Just, just dash around like so. So you create something like that now. I, don't, I know that looks a bit odd at the minute. As I mentioned, we're going to go up to our adjustments. We're going to go to perspective blur and we're going to grab this dot that it drops in the middle of the canvas. We're going to drop it smack bang in the middle of the sun, if not a smidge slightly higher. And then we're going to go ahead and swipe from left to right on our canvas until we hit 100% perspective blur. And that will just give us a much more sort of random look to it. And it will just blur those lines out a little bit more and give you that kind of warm look to it. And when you zoom out now, it doesn't look quite so sort of patterned. So you may need to do a couple of attempts of this just to see how you get on with your sun. But something like that is ideal. Now we need to go ahead and change this white area here to the correct color. So go down to your layers. We're going to go to our background color. And sometimes you can get this glitch here that pops up. If you go to your background at the top here and hit done, and then go back down to background color again, it will then show you your palette as it should be. And we're going to grab this color in the bottom right of the palette. So this is the darkest version of those navies and that's now in place. So now we've done all the planet work. Do you want to rearrange anything? Take the time at this point to see if you want to make any adjustments. So to start with, we're going to go ahead and add the highlight on the edge of all the planets and the rings themselves. So we're actually going to go up to our layers now and start to work out how we can group these together nicely. At the very top, we've still got the perspective blur on the sun and we can pinch that to the sun. So that's now one layer. And then we can grab the sun and move it all the way to the bottom in the very back, just in front of our background color. Now, when we go up to the top, we need to start looking at how we can group these things together. So the top layer here will stay on its own. We've then got the first planet here and then we've got the cookie cutter shape underneath. I just need you now to go ahead and pinch those two together. So the blue planet to the cookie cutter shape underneath it. And then we repeat that all the way down. So you will end up with a planet and then a cookie cutter shape and you can pinch them together. We've then got Saturn and a cookie cutter shape underneath it and pinch them together and continue that all the way down. So Jupiter and the cookie cutter, Mars and the ring beneath it, Earth and the layer beneath it, and then continue down. And then at the end, you'll end up with Mercury on its own and the sun on its own. And that's fine. We can leave them as they are. Now from the top, we're going to go ahead and on the very top layer, we're going to swipe it to the left and we're going to duplicate it. And I'm going to make life a lot easier for you now. We're going to go ahead and now we've duplicated it, swipe on the one underneath it and group. Now we don't necessarily even need to collapse the groups down every time, but this little break here in our layers will make things nice and visually easy to see. The top layer out of this group now, tap on it and clipping mask it to the one underneath it. We want to go to our colors now and double tap in the top left to select white. We want to go to our layers and the layer underneath it, tap on the layer, alpha lock it, tap on the layer, fill it. Then grab the layer above it that's clipped to it, grab your cursor and we want to reveal a white crisp edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and at the bottom of my canvas, if I tap once, it will move the design down a pixel. And if I tap again, it will move it down another pixel. And two is just enough for us to do this effect. So two, and that'll give you a nice crisp line on there and tap on your cursor. And we'll repeat this all the way down. So go to your next layer down, which is this one here. Turn it on and off just to be sure. We we'll swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And the one underneath, swipe that to the right. So you've got two selected and then group them together. And this will keep things nice and organized per planet. The top one in this group, tap on it and clip it to the one underneath. Go to the one underneath and tap on it and alpha lock it, tap on it and fill it. Then go to the clip layer above. Grab your cursor and again at the bottom, just tap twice. One, two, 
and then you'll end up with a nice crisp edge on the outside and also on the edge of the planet here. And tap on your cursor when you're done. Let's go up to our layers now and continue this process all the way down. So the next layer here, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Swipe the one underneath it from left to right and select it and then group the two together. In this group, we tap on the one we've got selected and clipping mask it to the one underneath. We then go to the one underneath and tap on it, alpha lock it, tap on it and fill it. Then go to the layer above, grab your cursor and then tap twice at the bottom, one, two, and you'll end up with a crisp edge. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Then go ahead and go to your layers. We're then gonna go down to satin, turn it on and off just to be sure. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Then swipe the one underneath from left to right to select it and then group it. Then tap on this layer here, the top one in the group and clip it to the one below it. Then go to the one underneath, tap on that too, alpha lock it, tap on that again and fill it. Then go back up to the clip layer, grab your cursor and then tap twice at the bottom of the screen. One, two, and we've added a crisp edge on that too. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Then go to your layers, go down to the next one, which is Jupiter, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Then grab the one underneath by swiping from left to right and then group it together. Tap on the top layer in the group and clip it to the one underneath. Go to the one underneath and tap on it and alpha lock it. Tap on it again and fill it. The one above, grab your cursor and again, tap twice at the bottom, one, two and you'll end up with that crisp edge on there and in there and tap on your cursor when you're done a couple more layers to go before we can finish this step off so let's go down again to now mars swipe it to the left and duplicate it select the one underneath as well group it together tap on the top one in the group and clip it to the one below tap on the one below and tap on it again and alpha lock it tap on it again and fill it go to the clip layer above Grab your cursor and double tap again at the bottom. One, two, and that adds that white edge on there as well. Tap on your cursor when you're done and go to your layers. We're gonna do earth next. So we'll swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Select the one underneath as well and then group them together. This one here, the top one in the group, tap on it and clipping mask it to the one below. And then we go down to the one below. We tap on it, we alpha lock it and we tap on it and we fill it. We then go to the layer above, grab our cursor and we double tap again, one, two at the bottom to move it down two pixels and reveal that white edge on the end of earth there. Now at this point, if you're starting to worry about your layers, you can, if you want to pinch each layer together in its group. So satin and it's white and then each layer you can pinch together in the group. We'll do it afterwards anyway, just to save layer counts for everybody. But if you're worrying about it right now, that's something you'll need to do. So the next planet here is there. We're gonna go ahead and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. We're gonna select the bottom one. We're gonna group them together. The top one, we're gonna go ahead and clip it to the one below it. We're gonna tap on the one below and then tap on it again and alpha lock and tap on it again and fill it. We go back up to the clipped layer, grab your cursor and then tap twice at the bottom. So add that white edge. Tap on your cursor when you're done. We then get into the singular objects on their own. So we only need to do it to this planet here. We don't need to do it to the sun. So we swipe this layer to the left and duplicate it. We select both of them. We group them together. We tap on the top one and clip it below. Now this layer is already alpha lock. So we go down to the bottom one and tap on it and fill it. We then go up to the planet on its own. Grab your cursor. And again, just tap twice, one, two, and that'll move that down got the white edge on there and then we've got all of our layers now done and as I mentioned we can save ourselves some layers here so in that last group that we created we can simply pinch the white highlight onto it so all you do there is you simply pinch two layers together and it merges them into one so this layer above now we simply pinch them together and it merges them into one so each group still remains which is great for organization but we're pinching each layer to its white highlight underneath I'm going to pinch them all the way until we get to the very top. So that's all the highlight edges done. It's a nice little feature when you get to the end and you see how crisp it looks. So now we've done that, we can move on to the shadows. So let's go up to our layers. 
and this is where it's really going to come to life so let's go ahead and in the top group of our layer count here we're going to go ahead and swipe this layer to the left and duplicate it we're going to go ahead and go to our colors and we're going to double tap at the bottom of the disk here to select black we're then going to go to our layers we're then going to go to the bottom one out of that group and tap on it and fill it because it's already alpha locked all of these layers should already be alpha locked we then tap on the layer and turn off the alpha lock we then go to our adjustments and we go to gaussian blur and we swipe from left to right until we add in 15 percent so this will be really repetitive if you've seen this before in the easter tutorial so you swipe from left to right until you get 15 percent at the top tap on your adjustments when you're done so let's carry on with our shadows so that's one layer done we then go down a group swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it the bottom one out of the two we tap on it and fill it we tap on it and we turn off the alpha lock we then go up to our adjustments and blur and we swipe from left to right again adding in a nice 15 percent shadow there tap on your adjustments when you're done we then go to our layers again we go down to the next group we swipe the layer to the left and we duplicate it we tap on the one below we tap on it and we fill it we tap on it again and we turn off the alpha lock again we go to adjustments and blur and we swipe from left to right adding in a 15% shadow and you can already see them starting to layer on top of each other which looks really smart we then go to our layers we then go to the next group and continue the process all the way down so we on saturn now we swipe it to the left and duplicate it bottom one out of the two we tap on it and we fill it and we tap on it and we turn off the alpha lock go to your adjustments gaussian blur and we swipe from left to right until we hit 15% tap on your adjustments when you're done we then go to our layers again and we've got Jupiter next. So swipe that to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, we tap on it and we fill it with black. And we tap on the layer and we turn off the alpha lock so that we can go up to our adjustments, Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right, adding in a 15% blur. Tap on your adjustments when you're done. Go to your layers. We've then got Mars. Swipe that to the left and duplicate it. Tap on the bottom one tap on it and fill it tap on it again and alpha lock it go to your adjustments and go to gaussian blur and swipe from left to right 15 percent blur as always tap on your adjustments when you're done go to your layers again We've got earth now swipe that to the left and duplicate it the bottom one tap on it and fill it tap on it and turn off the alpha lock go to your adjustments Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right until you hit what number 15% say it with me let's go to our layers we've then got two more to do so we've got this group here swipe it to the left and duplicate it the bottom one out the two tap on it fill it tap on it and turn off the alpha lock go up to adjustments Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right so you hit 15% tap on your adjustments when you're done and then we've got one more to do so we go to the singular planet in the group swipe it to the left and duplicate it we tap on the bottom one we tap on it and we fill it we tap on it and we turn off the alpha lock we then go to our adjustments gaussian blur and we swipe from left to right adding in 15 percent and tap on your adjustments when you're done and that's all the shadows we needed to do now what we can do is we can go up to our layers and then in each group, you've got the top layer, which is the original design. So for example, Saturn on the left-hand side, and then there's the shadow layer underneath it. What we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and select all the shadows so we can move them in exactly the same order and exactly the same angle. So we can go ahead now and we're on the shadow for the final planet there. We can swipe from left to right on every single shadow. So the bottom layer in each group, swiping from left to right to get right to the top. Then you can grab your cursor, you can move out a little bit in the middle. And all we wanna do is just move this up. So we wanna leave a little bit more of a shadow towards the bottom edge of everything. So something a bit more like this should do the trick. You can be a bit more drastic if you want to, something maybe a little bit more like that. And to be honest, I might actually leave that exactly like that. So nice and drastic with our shadows. But you don't wanna move it up too much. You still wanna expose some of the blue that's in the layer. So you can see the gap right at the bottom here that I've left and how much I've moved it up in terms of my design. So then tap on your cursor when you're done. So what you did there was you moved all the shadows in one big go and now we've got them all pointing in the right direction 
with the right light source. So that's all your shadow layers done now and your nice crisp white edge there. So what we're now going to do is add some extra features that are going to really take this to the next level and we'll soon be done. So what we're going to do is to start off, we're going to go ahead and go to our laser. We're going to add a glow from the sun that's going to be looking like it's nice and bright and we've got a nice light point then in the center of our design. So what we're going to do is in our layers, we've got the top cookie cutter shape here and the shadow underneath it. What we're going to do is if we just go ahead and create a new layer and drag it underneath both of those layers and it will fall out of the group and that's perfectly fine. We can leave it out of there. We then go to our colors and then we go ahead and grab the middle orange of the sun colors. We're then going to want to go to our brush library and make sure we're using the soft brush still under airbrushing. Otherwise, and we're going to make it nice and big roughly around about sort of about 49 percent that's pretty good nice and big and we're just going to sort of just tap away from the sun a few times one two three four roughly to something like that until we end up with a nice little glow there now we want to go ahead and change the layer from its normal value the n and change that to add and that will just soften that up make it a bit brighter and then what we also want to do is just refine the shape of it a little bit i want to get rid of some of the color from the top edge here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my actions and I'm going to go to canvas. And I'm going to add a drawing guide by turning that on and edit the drawing guide. I just want to add a symmetry option and make sure your option here is set to vertical. Now this will add a line that runs straight down the middle of your canvas, meaning what you do on one side is of course then symmetrical on the other side. And it's just so we can make sure it looks nice and even. We're going to go to our eraser and tap on the eraser and we'll go to airbrushing and the soft brush. And the brush size is set to about sort of 20%. I just want to sort of take away a little bit. Let's go a bit smaller than that. Let's go back to sort of 10%. I just want to take away that top edge to so just round that off like so. Rounding that off so it's a bit more towards the bottom and not so bright towards the top here. So just taking a little bit out of there. So now we've got our light source. We're going to go ahead and change up some of the shadows on these planets. Just to really emphasize how bright that is and darken up the other sides of them. So go to your layers. And we're going to go ahead and let's just start towards the bottom. So we've got the very bottom planet. So moving my canvas to the left so you can see it's that planet there right next to the sun. Now we could, if we want to, create a new layer and tap on that layer and clipping mask it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to double tap at the bottom of the disk to select black. We're going to make sure our brush is set to the soft airbrush under airbrushing. And we're going to reduce our size down just for this one, of course. And then just darken up the right hand edge a little bit more. So I'm just going to darken that up like so. Give it a bit more of a dramatic look there. So it's just where the lights is creeping around. We're then going to move on to this planet here. So we're going to go to our layers. We can, if we want to, pinch that layer that we just worked on to the planet, and then that's done. Then we're going to go up a layer to this one here. Create a new layer and tap on that layer and clipping mask it. We're then going to go ahead and darken up the planet. So again, just mainly within the planet, you just want to darken up that left hand edge leave the right hand edge where it's pointing towards the sun nice and bright it was make it look a lot more dramatic with the lighting so now you end up with that we're then going to go ahead and move on to earth so when we go to our layers and pinch that layer we were just working on to the one below it we go up to the earth layer create a new layer tap on that and clipping mask it and then we darken up the bottom edge so we just darken up in a circular motion so we leave that top edge nice and exposed to the light there. If we then go to our layers, we can pinch that to it. Then we can go up to Mars, create a new layer, tap on that layer and clipping mask it. Again, just darken up that left hand side. You may have to just start to think about increasing your brush size a little bit, but just darkening up that edge. Then we're going to go to our layers and pinch that to the Mars design. So we're just darkening up and leaving that right hand side. We then got Jupiter, create a new layer, tap on that layer and clipping mask it to Jupiter. You can then increase the brush size maybe to about 12% and then just darken up that right hand edge. Like so, going backwards and forwards like that. And just darkening that up until you add that really dramatic look to the top edge there. It's really coming to life now. And then let's go to our layers. Let's pinch that to the layer. Let's then go to Saturn now, create a new layer above it, tap on that layer and clip it. And then we're going to go ahead and just darken up the bottom edge again, leaving that top edge nice and exposed. So 
darkening up that bottom edge like so. Something like that. Looks pretty cool. Then go to your layers and pinch that layer to satin. Then go up a layer one more. So it's the planet down in the bottom right here. We create a new layer and tap on it and clipping mask it. And then we can do the same. We can just darken up that bottom edge. Just the back side of the planet basically. Then go to your layers and pinch that to it. And then we've got the very top planet here on the left hand side and create a new layer. Tap on it and clipping mask it. Let's move our canvas over and just in circular motion just darken up that edge a little bit. So you end up with a much more dramatic look like that. And that looks so cool. You've got the nice crisp edge on the outside there. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to my layers. And this layer here that we created for the glow for the sun, I'm actually going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it once more. And then tap on that layer and just lower the opacity down just a little bit. I want to really emphasize that lighting a bit more. So I've gone to 65% there. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is work on the canvas texture and just affect this top layer as well. And then make our way down and we're done. So you've made it through so many steps now. These are just the last extra touches. So let's go to our layers and we've got the cookie cutter shape right at the top. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new layer above that. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it to the layer below. And go to your colors and grab this color here in the bottom right of your palette and go to your selection tool go to rectangle and go to color fill and now you can draw a box and when you let go it will fill the color in now we want to draw something just about halfway through our canvas like so edge to edge and when you let go you'll drop that dark color in there tap on your selection tool when you're done then go to your adjustments and gaussian blur and if you swipe that from left to right pretty much to 100 percent you'll get a nice gradient there on the top and tap on your adjustments when you're done now let's add some canvas texture so go to your layers the layer that we just added the gradient just pinch that down a layer into the actual cookie cutter shape we're then going to create a new layer again tap on that layer and clipping mask it go to your colors and double tap in the top left hand corner to select white Go to your brush library and you're going to need to find the canvas texture that's in the description down below. Now, most of the time it goes all the way down to the bottom in imported, but for me, it's in the Joel Create section. And then we're going to just zoom out a little bit and we're just going to maximize the brush size. And then mainly towards the bottom edge, we're just going to sort of paint quite firmly and then very lightly as we start to make our way up towards that dark area, just let go with the pressure. It's more so towards that bottom edge. Then go to your layers. And tap on the layer option for that and just scroll down until you hit soft light and then what we actually want to go ahead and do is just tap on the layer again tap on it and turn off the clipping mask and then that way all the canvas will layer across the entire design and we can just drop it onto every layer in one go and now right at the end the only adjustment i want to make is i actually added a duplication of the glow here from the sun i'm actually just going to delete that so it's just a one glow so it's a little bit more subtle it's not so bright and if I pinch your two fingers and go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and a lot of repeating steps. If you managed to complete today's design, be sure to drop a like down below and show your support for the channel. And make sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. There's a link to all my socials in the description down below. As always, a massive shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. I'll throw their names up on the screen now. Patreon supporters get access to three exclusive tutorials every single month. I'll throw up the latest three on the screen now, as well as early access to videos, sneak peeks of upcoming designs, and much, much more. So there's links in the description down below if you want to come and show your support. And as always, if you're interested in any of the equipment I'm using, the Sketchboard Pro, that you can use code JOELCREATE to get yourself 10% off of, or a paper like screen cover that I use, or the pen tips, grip, and glove. There's links to all the equipment in the description. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.